Well, if you're out there in internet land and you're listening to us, then you're up awfully early on a Sunday morning to watch Roller Derby. My name's Tipsy McStaggers, and I'm with Scotch Minx on the live chat. Derby Nerd here on the other mic. Roadkill joining us on the uh, camera. Welcome. And, of course, manning uh, mission control, God Booth Master himself, Dr. Johnny Kaput. Yes, yeah, day two. Now, of course, people could be up on their way to church. I actually, uh, you know, I, I actually Come almost drove to church this morning and thought, oh, wait a second. No, it's roller, roller derby, derby day. Yes. Yes. Same thing, roller derby church. We, uh, we were mentioning it on the uh, way in this morning. Johnny had an excellent uh, observation as we pulled into the arena. A young woman got out of the car ahead of us with neon hot pants on and fishnets. And we were thinking only in roller derby is that acceptable attire at 8 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Right. And only in roller derby would, that, yeah, would you see that and not think twice about it. Twice. Exactly. Didn't even blink an eye. No. So this is day two of Blood Spill on the Hill, the 2011 Quirda Eastern Championships. We are running concurrently with the 2011 Western Championships in Quirda. Last night there were some upsets. There's a lot of excitement um, in the West. No upsets here in the East. Everything went as planned. The top four teams are through, and we're going to see two of them play in the first of two semifinals right now at 9 a.m. That is the Hamilton Harlots and the Forest City All-Stars playing in the first of the two semifinals. Bit of a grudge match we're going to have here. Yes. A couple, um, about six weeks ago, I'd say, Forest City went into Hammer's home in a home and a doubleheader and uh, took both games pretty handily, so Hammer City is going to want to meadow a little revenge this morning. I'd like to thank our sponsors, of course, Neon Skates, skateneon.com. They are sponsoring our whole tournament here up in the booth. And Estrosense. Estrosense. That's a, uh, uh, you know what? I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know exactly what Estrosense does. but uh, Something to do uh, with estrogen and, and uh, good sense? Uh, exactly. That's uh, uh, Rito Valley Skater Sister Disaster is uh, a very, very adamant user of uh, that product and firmly okay. believes that any female over the age of 10 should be taking this stuff. All right. So, uh, yeah, actually, she's... Uh, there you go. Uh, I'm not sure if it's an official sponsorship, but she actually is featured in a national EstroSense ad. Oh, And they okay. are proud supporters of uh, Roller Derby. As you uh, will look down on uh, the rink, you yes. will see a nice big poster up on the wall featuring a, a skater. It's uh, good to have them on board on the sponsorship group. Yeah, for sure. I'm a big fan now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do we actually have people on the text cast? That's amazing. You guys are troopers. Not awake, but on. Just slept with the laptop and exactly. Is it rolled uh, over and do we, do we got? Uh, is it Hammer City representing online, or is it uh, Forest, or hell, do we have the people from Royal City back? They're just trooping through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I know in uh, Toronto last night they had a big viewing party. The semifinals aired on Rogers TV in Toronto last night, so I, I don't. I think they were out pretty late. They might not be up for this first game yet. Mm -hmm. Forest City representing on the on the chat board. Nice. Well, Forest City yesterday defeated the Royal City All Stars in the first bout, uh, 232 to 24 to earn their spot here in the Sunday semifinal. Hammer City got here via a big victory, 234 61 versus the Bells of the Brawl from Bell City, Brantford. Lots of uh, lopsided victories on the first day. Yes. Won't, hopefully, we won't see as much of that today. Our second semifinals coming at 11 a.m. It's the Rideau Valley Vermin versus the G-Stars from GTA. That should be a good one. That should be another really good game as well, yes. And then our consolation final for fifth place, Muddy River from Moncton, the upstarts from the east. Uh, they had a really good day. I think you could see them develop as the day went on. They yeah. really enjoyed themselves. Uh, they'll be taking on Royal City, another team that I think those two clearly were the cream of the relegation crop yesterday. Yeah, I, and I actually have to say that uh, I'm really excited to watch that game. Both teams demonstrating excellent attitude and just the thrill and joy of the game. And uh, they're yeah. going to be fairly evenly matched. I think it's going to be a fun one to watch. Yeah, definitely. So tune in. That's coming at 1 p.m. I'm so excited about that game. I'm actually, I am going to watch it. Yeah, we're going to, actually, I'm the nerd and I, uh, we're, we, we got to break that one. We're going to be sitting in the stands cheering on. Uh, we're not even sure which team I want to cheer for on that one. No, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm, we are objective observers. We are objective. We are objective. Let's scratch that. I take that back. I'm not going to cheer for anybody. <laughs> Me too. I'm not going to cheer for either team. Yeah. But I think we're just a couple moments away from game time here. The referees look like they've just finished up their equipment checks. And uh, we are now only officially one minute off schedule, which is, I'd say, pretty good. Pretty good. Yesterday we ran mostly ahead of schedule, which was amazing. 
Uh, so we can see if we can keep that up today. Championship game is coming to you at 5 p.m. live on Canuck Derby TV. It'll be the winner of this one versus the winner of RVRG, the Vermin, and the G-Stars. So Four City and Hammer City have a very, very long history. I think, believe they first played one another in 2007. Ooh, that's going, going back. back. That is yeah. going back. That's like just not too long after the the birth of Canadian roller derby yeah. here. Yeah, one of the one of the first bouts for sure. And it was the um, I, forget, I think it was the Harlots or maybe the Tank Girls. Well, either the Harlots or the Tank Girls. I can't remember right now. We'll have to get that cleared up later. And it was against uh, a Four City All Star team. Mm -hmm. No, uh, I don't even know if they had their home teams formed yet. Would have been the Thrashers back then. Um, but uh, yeah, so a long history between these two teams, stretching back four years now. Seem to be waiting for the refs to stretch. <laughs> Not sure what's going on. Uh, uh, well actually, I should probably shout this out really early and uh, just remind everybody today that it is actually Father's Day. Yes. So if you are a father, happy Father's Day. And you know what would make a great Father's Day kind of activity? Grab the whole family, bring them all down to the Navin Arena out in beautiful Navin, Ontario, and join us for some uh, roller derby action. Yeah. My dad's not watching or listening at home, but I just still like to give a shout out to him as well. Sure. Yes, maybe during that game I'll actually have, have to call Any dads my dad. on the chat room? Online's getting a little impatient for this uh, bout to get going, so hopefully we get started here pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, we're getting a little impatient. Yes, if I was up at 9 a.m. to watch roller derby on Sunday, I'd want it to get going. Exactly. Oh. Why are you guys ruining my morning? Let's get this <laughs> show on the road. I woke up. It looks like it. Refs hey, are Hammer looking. City joining us on the chat board. All right, captains are out now to talk to Evil Jeffy, the head ref for this boat. And uh, we should actually give a big shout out to Evil Jeffy, who made a very long, jo long journey to come and uh, join us with this tournament. That's right. He came down from, I think it was actually even a couple hours north of uh, Thunder Bay. Yeah. So. Duluth? Duluth, something like that, yeah. yes. Yeah. Reeve, another ref here, Reaver from uh, Wisconsin, Matt Rolandals. Well, the game's starting with, uh, yep. it looks like both benches are, uh, it's turning into a dance contest early, ladies and gentlemen. Have we ever had a dance-off at a roller derby game? Has there ever not been a dance-off? Well, yeah. <laughs> no, I, <don't. laughs> yeah, I think they're all unofficial. That's the only problem. Unofficial dance-off. <laughs> yeah, oh. going to keep warm. Yeah. <laughs> we won't have any problems here in the, thing, the booth, I think. Okay, I think Evil Jeffy is explaining the rules of roller derby to the <laughs> <laughs> right Starting now. back in the beginning. Just making sure. Okay, we need to track five skaters. Oh, look, look at we got uh, he's, he's Motorhead Molly on the track, our uh, one of the referees for Rideau Valley, and she is just digging this. She likes her uh, she likes her Run DMC. <laughs> so oh who, do, who doesn't like the Run DMC? Oh, now we have an official dance party. Both teams celebrating on the rink, dance party time. Hey, again, we like where, to see this. Where else in roller derby is Run DMC acceptable at 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning? Impromptu dance party. Both teams dancing. The Church of Derby, right there. You know what? I think we're just going to call the game right here. Yep. Good game, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're all winners when we play roller derby. I think these guys know what time it is. Uh, They've obviously had their coffee this morning. Oh, and now a masked <laughs> luchador has joined. A Hammer City luchador has joined the dance party. <laughs> oh, Lord help me! Is this going to be this kind of day? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we were here for twelve hours yesterday. We got yeah, twelve ten hours more today. Oh Lord, have mercy! Oh, <laughs> evil Jeffy busting out. Marambo's <laughs> like, "Why are you dancing without me?" And now she's joining the fray as well. A little upset. Uh, and Penny Whistler trying to wrestle control back <laughs> in this game. <laughs> Come on, Penny, let loose. <laughs> okay. Uh, game hasn't even started yet. We're already a little punchy. I just uh, injected some caffeine directly <laughs> into my veins, so <laughs> mainline some caffeine. 
Okay. Oh. Well, we, that was fun. We will get underway here. Right on schedule. Nine ten. right? That's when the game is scheduled. Uh, I, I, I believe so. so. That's what I've got written down somewhere. Oh. So, Four City, they always seem to be the, um, I don't know, the, the bridesmaid. And maybe this is their opportunity to, to take this one. Yeah, they've gone far in a lot of local tournaments, but just haven't seemed to be able to grasp the, the, grab the brass ring at the very end. But, yep, maybe this is, uh, maybe this is their tournament. They got some stiff competition up ahead. Obviously, the you know can't can't look over Hammer City, and then whoever they meet in the finals will definitely be a challenging game. But That's right. this could be their year. Could be. And the Harlots with their first win of 2011, really the first win for this particular generation of the Harlots. So they uh, are coming off of a big high yesterday to advance directly to the semifinal. And they're taking this pretty seriously as well. They mm -hmm. uh, they they want to win uh, against this tough four city team. Yep, our uh, live announcers down there, Marshamella and the Emir of Istanbul, leading the uh, live crowd there and having a little bit of fun. And looks like teams are taking to the rink. All right, about to get underway. Judge Jody leading the Harlots out onto the pack. Marambo putting on the stripe for. Four City. Kielsen, not surprisingly, starting off on the jam line for the girls from London. So two very experienced packs. I see Back Alley Sally out there. They've changed their shirts, though, Four City now. Yeah, Four City wearing white and Hammer City wearing black. So that's important to point out, actually. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Opening First whistle. Day First two. Day two. Blood spill on the hill. We are underway. Kilson. Oh, oh bump right off the line as uh, Laura Rezalem. And Kilson electing to go through that pack, and she makes it. Kilson kicked things off yesterday with a 25-point jam to open up the bout against uh, Royal City. Oh, Hammer City jammer. One person left to beat in the pack, but then just gets knocked to her bottom. Making her way through again. About to get lapped. Back if alley Sally missing the hit on her. Marambo, though. Going to take her to the outside. Good battle. Oh, hard work by Marambo, but still, she goes down. And a nice job by the jammer from Hamilton, but Kilson's already through in a couple passes. Yeah, she's on her, on her, I would believe, her second scoring pass right now while yeah, so the Hammer City jammer is just beginning her first. I don't know if she's going to be able to grab a point on this one. Depends on how quickly the uh, four City jammer kills the jam. Kilson, they're, they're telling her, and she does call it. Yeah, she got shut out on that one. Hammer City, probably zero points. Oh, one point. I mean, give it to Kilson oh, on did that they one. sneak one in? She snuck one in. Oh. So six nothing is the opening. Not quite twenty five nothing as we saw yesterday. So this bodes well for the Harlots. Yep. But now they've got Andy Slamberg, the luscious lunch lady, on the jam line, on your face, pivoting this pack. Now. It seems... Oh, no, there's a... <laughs> I can only see three white shirts out there, but there's just a hidden blocker. Sneaky. Suffragette was hidden. Slow start now. Yeah. And there they go. Andy Slamberg first off the line. She's going to enter the pack first. Very slow-moving pack, and she is through very quickly. Lead jammer for City. Ooh, and Suffragette getting taken down. A little bit of a back block or an elbow, and she's being yep. elbow. She's being sent off. I think you could have called it either way. Yep, it looks like Smackio is going to have a little trip to the box there. Power jam for Four City. This is not the way that Smackio hasn't taken up. a seat in there. Finally, she sits down at the penalty box, and her time hasn't started until she takes her seat. She was having a little conversation with, I think, with the bench before she sat down. So power jam for Four City. Four City gave up that trap though. Couldn't keep that skater back there. This is a comparatively inexperienced pack uh, for Four City, comparatively. I think still more experienced than their Harlots counterparts. And they've got another GOAT, but now it's a matter of being able to hold her, and she is fighting to get out of there. On your face, following her out of bounds, following her back in. Yeah. Wax poetic, the Hammer City pivot, just trying to get control, trying to designate the pace of this pack, but no, no, no success yet holding that inside line. As soon as they get a pace line, uh, Four City just goes in and peels one off. Yeah. But here comes the Andy Slamberg now, the jammer. She's got a wall of black up front. Good work to push and force the jammer to the outside, but oh, 
Looks Good like Rex Poetic lost the line there, and the inside Dammer takes it an easy inside pass. So it's uh, not quite the explosive start they had yesterday, but nonetheless, they're out 21 0, well ahead of the Harlots right now. And the Harlots are going to have to settle things down here and try and get control. They're sending Judge Jody back out, the most experienced Harlots player. Mm -hmm. See if she can take control of this pack. On your face out there again with Marambo and back alley Sally. So now sending out a very experienced line to finish off this power jam. Yeah, Spacchio is standing up in the box, though, so she is going to be coming out in just a couple moments. I'm actually surprised they're not taking a knee. Forest City loves to take the knee. And also electing to take the front pace line. Perhaps just going to set a wall. And here comes Slacker Smacker. getting Taking a hit by Judge Jody, but getting right back up. And she is your lead jammer. Yep. Smackio, she sees an inside line, but then is forced strictly to the outside by the Forest City players. Suffragette back on the track now oh, for double Forest teamed. City. Back alley, Sally Marambo, shake and bake. We have our first suicide seat collision. With a little, a little bit of a shake and bake on Smackio. Slacker Smacker entering your scoring pass, cuts right through the wall at the back, and then one to beat on the inside, and she does so easily. Slack smack her through yep. the Grand Slam. Still no joy for Smacky O. She still has not broken the pack on her initial pass, but here she might make it. But Suffragette just staying in front of her. Oh, and her Suffragette down. goes down. Good opportunity for Smacky O. Again, we're seeing a lot of very experienced London skaters. Oh, Marambo is already in the box. How did that happen? <laughs> it's like she's got some kind of teleportation powers to just appear in the penalty box. Oh, Smacky O takes an elbow right in the chest. Oh, and Slacker Smacker took something to the face. I'm not sure if that was uh, what happened there, but Slacker Smacker and Judge Jody having a great battle at the front of the I pack know. right now. I know, Judge Jody the pivot just doing an excellent job. But the Slacker Smacker trying to call it. She's got to be a little more emphatic with her calls. Oh, exactly. We c if the referees can't see you touching your hips no. when you're in the middle of a pack, folks, yeah. you got to be a little more emphatic with your jam calls off. And uh, I, I could see that that ref's line of sight was not seeing that. Oh, no, definitely not. I know that uh, we try to emphasize uh, to all our younger players, yes, you may look cooler with the slight little taps on your on your hips, but that might not get the job done. Yeah. Let them know if you're calling off the jam. That's an opportunity for the other team to steal points. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Look. Nanya Biz out there for the, in the pack for Four City. I do believe Naughty B is uh, jamming for uh, Hammer. It's Kilson for London. Kilson taking the inside. Which is very fast on the outside. Inside, oh, outside. I think we're going to have Hammer City's first lead jam. It is. See if they can get some get some points to break that goose egg up on the board. As the score right now is 30 to nothing with a four city lead. That's right. And that's Natty Brewster with lead jam for the first first lead jam for the Harlots. No, Naughty B. Oh, Naughty B. Kilson trying to make up some time, but she was held in that pack. Rainbow back in the track now for London. And Naughty B starting to. Lose a little bit of her momentum. There's a point. Marambo immediately taking over this pack. Oh, and trying to get pulls a it off. Just as Kilson was coming around, did Kilson get a couple? And she did. Yeah, she, I think she snuck two in on uh, the one point from the Hammer City Jammer. So Hammer City unable to take advantage of that lead. Lead Jammer call. Yeah. Well, at least the goose egg was broken. That's right. It only took eight minutes to get there, which is a uh, pretty good time compared to some of the games yesterday. 32-1, 23 minutes left in the first half of this first of two semifinals. On your face, leading the pack for Four City. Judge Jody once again for the Harlots is your pivot are your pivots. Oh, and another lead for the Harlots. Andy Slamberg though following her trail. That's Loreza Lamb. Glad I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Loreza Slam. Loreza Slam. Yes. There we go. Something, yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a rather one jumbly word on my uh, roster right here. But she, anyways, regardless of how I pronounce her name, she is the lead jammer. I, I did get uh, help with that yesterday, actually. Yep. Yeah, L L Loraza Slam, Loraza Slam. Andy Slamberg, though, not and too she far calls behind. it off. Just grabs, one. Grabs her one point, but shuts out the other team's jammer. Right, so Hammer City's going to have to find a way to take advantage of these leads. Because uh, they've pulled off two in a row, but have only managed to pick up two points and have given up to you as well. Well, it's a 60-minute game. It's, it could turn into a game of inches. Good. Well, that's one power jab away from uh, tightening up this game real quick. 
Slacker Smacker with an interesting starting pose. I don't, I don't know if she's been starting all. Oh no, okay, that's better. I don't know. She's down with that spread. I think she was trying to uh, go to penalty out of one of the Hammer City players. If the pivot lines up on the line. No, I saw the jammer. I oh, the jammer. Right. Sorry. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I saw the I saw the pivot <laughs> yeah. was yes. in her little stretch out. Pose. Yeah, Marambo likes to do that again. <laughs> Let's draw out some minors against some inexperienced players. Slacker Smacker though through with Lee Jammer. So however she started, it worked. Yeah, but Naughty B stuck way back at the path before a city pack. Yep. Good. Uh, good pack work right now by Four City. Marambo on your face. Mighty mm -hmm. Thor out there. Naughty B stumbles over her own player's legs. Has to restart all the way through with it from the back. And Bustin Beaver is rounding out the pack for Forest City. Kills him through. Honor scoring pass. Grand slam. So this one not starting off uh, the way they wanted it for Hammer City. Wax Poetic still trying to grab desperate control of uh, this pack for her team. Trying to dictate the pace, but to no avail. No, not against... Uh, She's got a tall order now with Anya Face and Marambo up there, two of the more experienced Four City blockers. Yeah, that's blockers. A definitely a shutdown parent right there. Marambo giving a little whip. Slacker Smacker making sure she can get by that last blocker. Number 86 in black. And Slacker calls it. So there's Four City sticking with the th same three jammers they went with yesterday. Mm -hmm. Slacker Smacker and uh, Kilson. From Thames Fatal and the Luscious Lunch Lee's Aiden Slamberg rounding out that pretty deep, deep uh, jammer bench for Four oh. City. This is a new jammer for Hammer City. I haven't seen it in a little bit. It's uh, uh, Juicy Flawless. I think she got some action in yesterday. Yeah. Kielsen out there, the workhorse for London. Back alley Sally and Marambo at the front of the pack. For the girls in white. Slow start to this one, and Kilson around is your lead jammer. Nunya Biz and Mischievous Lady also out there for Four City. Girls in white have been having their way with this pack in the early goings of this one. Nunya Biz mixing it up with the jammer right now, and Back Alley Sally comes in for some support. And Nunya Biz runs a raid out of bounds. Unfortunately, she followed her out of bounds as well. Yep. Minor cut, I thought, being called on that one. Oh, no, major cut. Oh! Oh, the... Marambo just sunk a shoulder deep into the jammer's chest there and took her for a good spin. Back alley Sally in the penalty box for four city. Four three pack advantage for the Harlots. Oh, good. a cut by the jammer again. It was an inadvertent one. I, just her momentum brought her back in. She tried to step back out, but yep. to no avail. Power just, jam. Jesse Flawless taking a seat in the penalty box. I think Marambo is just realizing that there's a power jam. Trying to line up her blockers now to find a goat, and they've got Candy Sass. Oh, on the inside. Judge, Judge Jody. Jody just blew through the entire Four City pack with one bl one very good hit. Now that's a way to break a wall. <laughs> yeah, right there. <laughs> Coaches at home. Line that clip up in the future. <laughs> just knock it down. Yeah. But there's a good trap right now. Candy Sass. Oh, a very uh, almost intelligently Candy Sass taking a penalty in. Uh, Oh, but ah, that was Judge an Jody. I, did the referees realize that there was no more go? Judge Jody was not out of play on that. No, one. no, she was actually she's getting sent in a full penalty box for yeah. Hamilton right now. Not only was Judge Jody not out of play, she was actually in the pack when they called that out of play call. I don't think they realized Candy Sass was thrown off at the back, meaning that the uh, trap was done. So, oh, maybe there was no pack. That maybe there was, yeah, there was yeah, no a, pack call. Either way, it might have been a tough call yes. for any Hamilton player to swallow. Yeah, there was a lot going on on that one, but yeah, no, if there was no pack, that would have been a good call. Always got to give the ben benefit of the doubts to the uh, Zebra Mafia. Definitely. As well, hey, it is the Zebra Mafia. That's right. Give the benefit of the doubt to anyone named Mafia. Exactly. Juicy Flawless standing up in the penalty box, getting ready to rejoin uh, the pack. Andy Slamberg out there for Four City. Four City taking a knee. Can you get this started quickly. Oh, uh oh. Some confusion. Yes, about whether or not they were on a knee. Slamberg, though, threw quickly. That wall of two up front. And she Juicy just waits. Takes the inside on the turns. Juicy Flawless about a, just under a half lap behind the uh, Forest City Jammer and just now approaching the Packer on her initial pass. 
And Trixie in the back there for Forest City trying to mess up the back wall. Yep. By the Harlots who were trying to lead their jammer through. Oh! Trixie. Nice. 9-11 for Hamilton. Zoe Disco clearing a line for her jammer. Excellent work. Suffragette, though, trying to hunt her down, waiting for that to play call, and has to let her go. Good Hamilton players that. standing up in the penalty box, getting ready to rejoin the pack. Judge Jody on her way in. And Slamberg calls that. Just want to mention quickly that uh, here on the interwebs, uh, we got Dirt Herder saying that Minxie is definitely better than Derby Nurse and Tipsy McStaggers. Just pointing that out there right now. <laughs> oh, nice. Who is that? Dude. Dude, you, you, you. <laughs> oh, wait a second. One guess who that is? Who does he happen to be, like, tuning in from a very, very far away place? Oh. <laughs> who, who is getting the nod there? Uh. Oh, Minx was Minx. getting nod. Ah, Minxie Minx. is getting nod, yes. Yeah. Well, textcasters, um, you don't have to... Get, you, see, the, the thing is, people, when they're listening, they don't get annoyed with the textcasters' voices <laughs> that's for a true. long tournament. That's so, true. So uh, that's, that's the advantage that they have. <laughs> oh, but I think there's also... Uh, I think she might have the inside line on this uh, individual. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Anyways, back to yeah, gameplay. <laughs> Slacker Smacker there. It, the score is 66-2. Fifth halfway through the first half. Slacker Smacker. Nice pass on the inside to take lead jammer. And that was a long, uh, full, full lap pass. Oh. oh, and Anya face with a big collision with the jammer. Naughty B taking the wrong end of that hit. And yeah, and Anya being sent off. Anya got to keep her feet there. Oh, Make sure that hit is clean. Did she leave her feet on that one? Well, I, yeah, it was just looked sloppy all yeah. around. I think it was one of those, something was wrong with that hit calls. Not sure what it is. I <laughs> arbitrarily picked this. No, but there was, it was definitely something wrong. <laughs> Bustin' Beaver out there. Holding the front for Four City. Mighty Thor. Finally, Naughty B has made her way through the pack. A couple lunch ladies out there uh, controlling things for Four City. I'll be working on my microphone control through the uh, rest of this uh, tournament again. Still get a little muffly. Sorry. I'm muffly. Oh, muffly. I'm muffly. <laughs> oh, Scotch Minx with some inappropriate comments that you guys can't <laughs> hear at home. But boy, yeah, that's another thing. You, you, you guys, like you guys must sailor. love the te test casters, but uh, yeah, they're uh, they're cursing you guys up here. Scotch Minx mouth to make a sailor blush. <laughs> Kilson very quickly off that line. Immediately into the pack. Kilson loves to weave in and out, and she takes lead jammer. Smack Yo jamming for Hammer City, but having a little bit of difficulty breaking in through that pack. Constantly running into shoulders and hips. We got three blockers from Thames Vatel out there for London right now, and Slacker Smacker just easing her way through. Big wide stretched pack from Hammer City. Macchio looking up against two Forest City blockers and makes her way by the first one, but oh, again on the wrong end of a shoulder for that. Yeah, and, and back alley Sally, as much as the Harlots are trying to get her off of their jammers right now, going one on one and uh, doing quite well. Nice big hit to the inside from back alley Sally. Being called for what was the call? Not sure, I didn't catch that. Waiting again for we you know we were compl I was complaining about this to the refs last night is when they're telling the wrangler the penalty they should be making the call again for us, us again so please. we can see continue the hand gestures all the way yes. through looked like a clean hit oh forearm forearm it Johnny like. Capote was watching the refs and saw it was a forearm call oh I tell you though looks like the uh, smack yo is just taking a beating on this jam and is very very slow to move to the bench. Even Kilson taking a breather after that one. So, yeah, if there are any referees listening, though, uh, when you do tell the Wrangler the penalty for the Bowcasters, just give a little uh, symbol again. Yeah, just a little, yeah, sure. little, little hand motion that uh, goes a long way. And that, that means we don't have to keep guessing up here. <laughs> or rely on Johnny Capote to be uh, following everything on the track. Scott Smix making several hand motions at the moment, none of them appropriate. <laughs> Andy Slamberg jamming for the lunch ladies. Just trying to pick out who the oh. Hammer City jammer is here. but Being called for the back block. 
Andy Slamberg. Oh, so we have a power jam here as... Uh, Oh, and there, Hammer City was doing a good job, but finally now we got a pace line. This is a comparatively an experienced line right now for um, for Four City, but Pivot is doing a great job of trying to call her players forward. Lucky it's Lady Pearl hard. jamming for Hammer City. Haven't seen her on oh, the Oh, mis mischievous yet. lady. Almost got another forearm out there. Oh. Wow. Big tumble there on the back of the pack. Trixie Von Smash being taken down the back of the pack for Four City. So Four City unable to get a pace line. Back alley Sally now back on the track, and she is calling again, but they've got yep. a trapped skater. Lucky Lady Pearl taking outside line, but she loses it and goes out of bounds. There's a cut right there. Yes. Uh, that'll be, I think, her fourth minor, and she is on her way out, Lucky Lady Pearl. So erase that power jam for yep. the Harlots. This is their first opportunity to really uh, put a dent in this uh, massive lead. Now she was out there for a fair bit of time, meaning that Hamilton is going to get... Uh, sorry, Forest City is going to get a significant power jam out of yep. this as well now. Another cut being called. Lots of cuts being called right now. It's early. Things a little sloppy on Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. We're about 20 minutes into this. Uh, first Andy bout. Slamberg, some passive blocking going on, trying to draw a penalty out of the Ed, blocker. Yes. And there it goes now. And Slamberg being called. Back block major? I'm not entirely <laughs> sure what that was there. I, really? Looked like passive blocking out of play to me. I don't yeah. know. I guess Andy Slamberg could have gone around her, but it's not her responsibility to get around those blockers. Those blockers have to let her go, right? Yep. Oh, strange call. Yep. So, yeah. So, uh, anyway. I'm not entirely sure what. Well, there's an official timeout yes, right now. Four City immediately jumping all over that call. They're not liking that at all. Yeah, you can yeah, see on yeah. your face he's saying that exactly. I don't even need to pull the rule book out for that one. You have got to get out of the way. And even then, even then that back block, if anything, looked like a minor to me, not a major. I wasn't sure what the actual call was there. I didn't see the hand gesture. Referees are going to confer. Penny Whistler leading the discussion now with the refs. Now, it could have just been perhaps the uh, the referee felt that the uh, the uh, jammer was purposely following the blocker in an effort to to draw the penalty. Well, she certainly wasn't making an effort to get to out of the get, way, her, get, get around, around her. the blocker. But again, it's in the rules. It's it's not her responsibility to do that. Um, she was on a straight path, and uh, that blocker was out of play. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking for my rule, looking for rule numbers now. Yeah. We had a, a little bit of moment of sin bin dancing. No shortage of uh, hip shaking and boogie in this morning on a Sunday. Uh, yeah. A good question from the chat room is: uh, Anyone drinking this early on a Sunday morning? Uh, yeah, there's uh, our beer. Uh, our beer tent is not open yet. No, unfortunately, thanks to Ontario liquor laws. Is it 3 p.m. again today? Uh, I don't know. I really hope that not. Means that means our break, we wouldn't get to uh, have a beer. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, actually, that's, that's a very, very good you brought up. There. Again, people, this is why you don't want official timeouts. We start talking about our lives. No one wants to hear anything about that. So Penny Whistler now with the explanation. Yep, they're just uh, trying to settle the, uh, the confusion down there. Penny Missler making a no call. Sorry, I'm trying to not read lips, but read body language, okay. and uh, it's difficult. Penny Whistler, yeah, I don't want to guess what she's saying. <laughs> we could make up lots of stuff. Yeah, but it looks like, I mean, from based on the body language, I think they're saying that Slamberg could have gotten around her. But it, again, I, I, I don't know what rule that she's uh, going to be citing here to, to win this argument. I can't find my rule book right now, unfortunately. It's in my luggage. I've uh, thrown my rule book out. <laughs> Who needs rules? Exactly. I see a lot of the Muddy River skaters already in the arena. Yep. 
excited for their relegation final today. Scotch Mix, do you have something? Uh, yeah, we got a couple questions here on the uh, chat board. I'm um, wondering if we have an instant replay for that penalty. <laughs> but, uh, the well, that's uh, actually a really good question. However, if you were to uh, hit the donate button uh, on the uh, Connect Derby News uh, broadcast there, you would actually go a lot further to ensure that we have things like replays at the next Connect Derby TV broadcast. That's right. I'd like to know, did you actually see an instant replay there a while ago? Because I tried one. So Johnny is working the VCR right now. Nothing but the best high-tech equipment yes. here. Yes, cutting edge 1991 technology. Well, oh, apparently replays are working. They're happening. They're just not reliable. Working, yes. but not reliable. Oh, and I think they're going to bring Slamberg. I don't know. They're just going to go explain. Yep, yep. Probably just going to explain to her. So a long, long official timeout. Four minutes, 20 seconds so far for this official timeout. A little infectious. The dancing has moved into the Connect Derby TV <laughs> <laughs> media booth. We're moving into the... Strange mix of music this morning. Going from Run DMC to... A little run around <laughs> too. <laughs> to run around too. Yep. Zoe Disco. She seems to be a very imposing figure up on the Hammer City blocker line there. I'm not sure if she is a, uh, a, younger, a younger player or a... Uh, or a veteran on the team, but uh, she is an imposing figure when she's lining up against you. I think she's a fairly new skater. So, just two blockers. Uh, I guess uh, whatever happened there, the Slamberg remains in the penalty box. Oh, no, she is being released. Oh, yeah. That's All right. Okay, that's extra odd now. It's being released, though, not starting on the jam line, so I'm not sure what happened there. We need, a, we need someone running up here and telling us what's going on. But so Amy Slamberg, anyway, justice has been served. She's right back there, on the track. We just discovered that Zoe Disco is a first-year player, and she's coming along nicely as she makes a large hit to take the jammer out of bounds on that one. She will be an in integral part of the uh, future of these Harlots exactly. as they rebuild. Nice yep. job by Miranda to bring out two blockers there. Yep. They've got one goaded now. Oh, that, that might be a little out of play, though. They're, oh, yes. wait. Yep, they, oh, they got one goaded. That's great. Yep. Looks like finally we're going to get the Hammer City Jammer out of the penalty box in a moment. Yes. Another uh, Harlot skater going to the box. As Slamberg comes around to try to score. Good job by the pivot there from the Harlots pulling her out. And here comes the Harlots Jammer now. Lucky Lady Pearl. Oh, but just driven out of bounds. Wow, penalties being called uh, left, right, and center in this one. Yeah, that seems to be the end of the jam. The reps woke up a little grumpy this morning. Apparently eh? so. Little zebra mafia justice That's being right. dished out on the on the rink. Game being held very tight. Slacker Smacker back out on the line now. The score, by the way, after all of that time outing, is 89-7 with 8:25 left. First half here of the first of two semifinals. If you're watching, thank you for watching and tuning in. Our second semifinal will be at 11 a.m. and I expect a tight one, a tighter one. In that one. Well, you know, anything can happen, but that should be a tight game. Oh, it looks oh, like Slacker Smacker with a big burst of speed. Lead jammer. Looks on like a oh, on your face, getting almost getting a leg out. <laughs> what a slam! She was actually making a couple back block motions to the uh, referee. I think she was unsure at some of the some of the contact she received coming through the through the pack, but it's not the not the player's job to call the penalties. That's right. And I imagine that probably just irks referees when players <laughs> take it upon themselves to call. Speaking that. from experience, just a little. <laughs> just a little. Just a little, yeah. Slacker Smacker getting through, and she's bumped. Oh, she's just, yep, fiery through the bench. Slacker Smacker's having a big breakout year in Forest City. She's become a key part of their offense, obviously, like as you've seen all weekend. Looks like Juicy Flawless lining up on the line for jamming for Hammer City and uh, Wax Poetic, I believe, going to try to lead this pack for Hammer City. 
even though they are shorthanded lining up there on the line. Four City electing to get this one started right away. Taking a knee. Jammers released. I think they like Kilson's chances on a in a fast fast start, and she is all of a sudden alone. Wall of two black up front. Yep. And she's gonna get by them. Looks like uh, Lee Jammers or Kilson's lead percentage must be phenomenal this weekend. I haven't seen her lose too many first laps. Back alley Sally, back to the penalty box. Is there a second or even third trip in this uh, half? Yep, Juicy Flawless just having no end of trouble trying to make her way through. Kilson though, through with ease for a grand slam. Five more points, 98 now, already reaching the century mark. Six minutes to go. Zoe Disco half. doing her best to uh, take the uh, hammer, take the Forest City pivot out of her position, allows her jammer to make her way through. Bustin Beaver now joining back Alley Sally in the box. Strong pack advantage for Hammer City right at the moment. Forest City though, it's a lot of penalty troubles. No, Dustin Beaver, Bustin Beaver being called back out. Perhaps a minor? Perhaps. And she mistakenly thought it was a major, but uh, yes, the ref's calling her back out. She's confused. 539, 102 to 7. They have now officially passed that century mark. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're having some Kahlua in your coffee, have a drink. Oh, yeah, that's actually a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Why didn't I think of that an hour ago? Yeah. <laughs> Looks to me like the Hammer City bench is uh, shortening their jammer rotation a little bit. We're seeing uh, Lucky Lady Pearl really start to pick up the slack on the jamming. She's had some success, so they're going to see try to go with what works. And, and Forest City is just continuing with their one, two, three punch. Yep. Speak of the devil, Lucky Lady Pearl grabs lead jam. But Andy Slamberg's hot on her tail and picking up a lot of track very quickly, and she's oh going to yeah. pass her at turn number two. Exactly. Inside line. Oh. oh, and both jammers go down. Jammer on jammer action on going into turn three. Good calls by the refs in letting that one go. Mm -hmm. I think they were equally at fault in whatever happened there. I think just the little skates got caught up. But Slamberg is not the lead jammer, but she's leading the race right now. She's going to force a call at the very least. The Hamilton bench screaming for her to call it off, yes. but I'm not sure if she can hear them. <laughs> no, she's not looking at them either. Oh, there it is. And, and she calls it. Just going for a skate. Sunday afternoon, Sunday morning skate. Yeah, Lucky Lady Pearl, chat room at home. Is she a uh, veteran Hammer City player, or is she another <laughs> one of the, the new generation? I think she's just trying to give lock and roll uh, an aneurysm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lock and roll from the Hammer City A team running the bench for the Harlots today. Harlots uh, emphatically, oh, calling off their pivot. Didn't realize they had a skater in the box. Mm -hmm. All right, the pivot went out. Naughty B is jamming for uh, Hammer City. That's Judge Jody in the box. And, uh, Zoe Disco, she's going to seem to be uh, taking control of the pack for Hammer City. And she, oh, tries to force to the jammer to the outside. Gets an arm up a little high. But Slacker. Smacker is your lead jammer. She's been taking that outside path all day, all weekend. Yep. Three thirty-three left. One hundred two to seven. Here comes Slacker. Smacker on a scoring pass. Harlot's jammer still trapped in the pack behind oh. Trixie Von Smash right now. Trixie Von Smash, and I think that's Nanya Biz doing a good job holding her back. Or is it Freezer Burn? Naughty B taking a little bit of punishment while she's trying to Freezer make her burn. way through the pack. Freezer burn, Suffragette, Trixie Von Smash, and on your face out there controlling things handily for Four City right now. Oh, 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 oh. Jammer Jeez. maybe getting called for a low block. I think she's going to yeah, be sent off. Yeah, she goes. Not sure she's aware, though. No, she's not. Fall small, Jammers. That's the lesson to learn. Fall small. I don't think she's happy with that call either. She's well, giving a couple dirty looks on the back to the referee. But it was definitely uh, a bad fall. You, gotta, yeah. you have to be in control of all of your appendages. Just like in hockey, inadvertent high sticks, you've got to be in control of your stick at all times. Yeah. You've got to be in control of your legs at all so times. Just coming to a start of a uh, Forest City power jump. And Slacker Smacker flying through. <laughs> almost trips over her own blocker there. Absorbs the hit from Judge Jody and keeps going. Yeah, trips her way through that one. But she's going to call it and try to set up. <laughs> She's getting a little more emphatic with her jammer calls. Uh, one thing I've noticed on uh, so far this uh, this tournament is uh, a lot of the uh, outside lines. Jammer's not sticking to that inside as much now. Yeah. Perhaps uh, 
I, we talked about that a little bit yesterday. I think it's a matter of just the inexperience um, that we're seeing from some of the teams here. Yeah. And because usually uh, we wouldn't see those four city jammers taken outside line against, say, uh, the A team even. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or that we won't be seeing that if they move on and play yeah. Rito Valley or GTA. Either. They see the outside. It's. Uh it's uh, perhaps even though it's for the jammers that are just a little more experienced or are a little more solid under their wheels, they feel that they can beat those yes, the those outside skaters. battles yeah. with a little bit of momentum. And Kilson has been having her way. Yep. Not sure who it is back there. Looks like uh, Wax Poetic was solidly goaded at the back of the pack there for a bit, but now she's moved her way back into position. Bustin' Bieber. Bustin' Bieber out there with Marambo. Back alley, Sally and Mighty Thor. Nope. Dominating. Large out of play front pack for uh, Hamilton there. And it's good. Kilson's through. Kilson's uh, such a calm jammer. Nothing really phases her. Well, she, they're in solid control of the game, so. Looks like team captain uh, Naughty B for Hammer City is out of the penalty box, jamming for her squad. We are under a minute. Under a minute. And Kilson's going to call it with the Harlots jammer back on the track. Take this so opportunity to say uh, everyone should, uh, especially you in the Montreal area, check out Neon Skates or online. That is at Skate Neon. Skate Neon. Got SkateNeon.com. SkateNeon.com. As well as Astro Sense. Go to your local health food establishment and pick up some. Uh, Excellent uh, product here just towards you, ladies. That's right. We have time for one more jam, if we can get it off here. Mm -hmm. 15 seconds left on the clock. 16 seconds, sorry. 126 to 7. It's a 119-point lead. I like that easy math. Easy math, yes. It's the only math I can do. Official timeout now. I think uh, officials should be punished in a particular way for calling an official timeout with only 15 <laughs> seconds left in a, in a half when one team's up by 119 points. Exactly. But looks like we're going to get right <laughs> no. off the ball here. I'm sorry. I'm being hard on the refs this morning. I know. They left us hanging a couple times yesterday. <laughs> That's right. Okay. We're underway. Last jam of this first half. Andy Slamberg again taking that outside Ooh. line and not even hesitating. Jumps inside to get by the last blocker. She's a lead jammer. Juicy Flawless coming to the front of the pack. One person left to beat. Uses her own player as a shield and pushes her way through. Although it looked like she may have picked up one cut penalty while she was on her way through there. Mighty Thor pivoting now for... No, on your face, sorry, pivoting. And they've got a girl goaded. Oh, she, there's going to be a little problem right there. She is just the, the referee... Of course, the uh, sorry, the uh, Forest City Jammer, unhappy with how long it's taking the referees to call off yes, the jam. Yes, the uh, that's one. Is that a, one of your jam refs? Girl in purple. What's her name? Uh, Motorhead Molly. Yeah, that's a, that's a Rito Valley roller girl. But she is also very adamant that if you are calling off the jam, let us know. Get the hands going. Yeah. The little tapping and holding your hips like that doesn't do the job. And it's also interesting to note that it's the second tap on the hip that actually yes. starts the call off. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's going to do it for the first half, and I think all scores have been updated. So 130 to 70, I'm to 7. Sorry, I'm confident to tell you that is the score going into half. Big lead for Four City in control of things on their way to a potential berth in the championship. Well, we've uh, got about uh, 13 minutes of uh, halftime here, so we're going to take a couple moments to go uh, freshen up. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Tipsy McStaggers and Scotch Minx. And I'm the Derby Nerd. Amazing. And we'll be back in uh, about 13 minutes. Live in the second half. <laughs> 